Hello class, this is a continuation on calculus. In this video, we'll be looking at the gradients of tangents from a secant. So the main question that we're looking to answer is, what is the gradient or the rate of change of a curve? We previously learned to calculate the average rate of change between two points by use of a secant. And we did that by drawing a line, finding those two intercepts and finding that gradient. But now we want to calculate the, the rates of change, not the average rate of change, the rates of change at one point. We will do this by use of tangents. Tangents are lines that touch or intersect at one point of a curve. So here are a few examples here. So if we have this function, if we draw a line and it intercepts exactly at this point, that is called a tangent. Uh, don't mind the drawing. It's a it's not accurate by my own hand, but I hope you understand the concept. Here's another one. It hits that point exactly just once. And even though if we extend the line further, we know it intercepts at three points. But we're only focusing on the tangent generated when it hits at this point. By measuring the gradients of the tangents, we are calculating the rates of change at one point. This would be called the instantaneous rate of change. So in comparison, before we found the rate of change between two different points like this, so those two points, but that was the average rate of change we're now finding the exact rate of change at this very point. Hence why it's called the instantaneous rate of change. But the question, I, <laughs> more questions rise up. How will we calculate the gradients of the tangent if there's only one point? So for example here, let's say we had the point 1, 1, which, which, which we could calculate using the function. So we have x2, y2, or you can say this is x1 and y1. But as you can see, to find the gradient, we need two points. So we have one point here, but we don't have another point. Hmm. Any attempts to use the same point to calculate the gradients of the tangent oops, does not give a proper result. So most um, people thought to just use, oh, let's say we have two points, 1, 1, and the exact same point, 1, 1. If we use these two points, we get a gradient of y2 minus y1, 1 take away 1, divided by x2 minus x1, 1 take away 1. But this gives us a improper result, 0 divided by 0. Hmm. So we can't do that. And so, the way to calculate the gradients of this tangent here is by turning a secant into a tangent. Okay, this is done by moving one point of a secant closer and closer to the point of the tangent. Okay, so just know that using values in this manner cannot result in the actual gradient, only an approximation. But this will lead us into um, the proper gradients of the tangents. So here's a demonstration of moving one point closer and closer to the tangent. So the tangent that we want to measure, oops, just understand that eventually we want to measure this tangent here, the one I've just drawn. How we're going to do that is move this point closer and closer until it hits that point. So for example, here's y2 and, y, uh, and x2. Currently, it's the values of 2, 4. And we found that the gradient of this tangent is 3. If we move x a little bit closer, let's say x is now 1.5, we can calculate the y value using the function value and we recalculate it again. So 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The gradient of this secant is 2.5. And we keep moving that point closer and closer and closer. So here's the third time that we do it. The gradient is 2.1. We'll do it again. This time it's really close. It's 1 and 1.01. 1 .01. The gradient of this secant is 2.01. We can actually move this even closer. 1.001. 0, 0, 1. So it's even closer. The gradient of this is 2.001. And one more time, even closer, we repeat the gradient calculation, and it gives us a gradient of 2.0001. Okay, while this is only an approximation, there appears to be a pattern emerging. We can see that as the second point, P, X2, Y2, so here's the point P, as that approaches, meaning it moves closer and closer, to the tangent point, so let me illustrate this, as this moves closer and closer to this tangent point, the gradient appears to be m equals 2. As you can see, it's 2.01, 2.001, 2.0001. I'm sure you can see that if we move it even closer, this gradient will be 2.0000001 and so on. And this, now this process can be repeated manually on any tangent point along any function. So let's say instead we want to the tangent at this point. So we're going to move a different point closer this way this time. Or we can have an entirely different function. This is y equals x cubed plus 1. And let's say we want the tangent at this point. Well, to find the gradient of the tangent here, we pick that point, pick a second point of a secant, and we move that point closer and closer until eventually it becomes the tangent that we are looking for. However, as we saw here, this was just six repetitions of calculating the gradient. Um, What's it called? However, we saw that it's very tedious to calculate the gradient between two points repeatedly as one moves closer and closer. So we don't want to do this manually every time. So if only there were a method to repeat this process infinite times. So rather than, rather than doing it manually once, sorry, once, twice, three times, four times, so in this case, there was five repetitions of the gradient approximations. We saw this previously. If only there's a way to do this instantaneously, infinite times. Well, this is where the use of limits will be needed. So in summary, what we're aiming to do is to calculate the gradient of a tangent. So far, we only know how to calculate the gradient of a secant. And now we know that we can calculate the gradient of a tangent by moving this point closer and closer. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll be covering limits.